A few videos ago, I used this setup to demonstrate high voltage power transmission. And to do that, I had this power line here operating at 10 kilovolts AC. And what that means is probably around a 15 kilovolt peak above ground. And to mimic that transmission line, what I did was included a string of resistors, 8K worth of resistors, and I wanted to show you what the voltage was across those resistors at various times during the experiment, so I hung a voltmeter here. And the idea was by hanging the voltmeter here, it would be sufficiently far enough from everything at ground level so there wouldn't be big giant sparks going from the voltmeter to ground and blowing up the voltmeter. Anyway, that was a brilliant idea and I did it. And when I got the experiment going and got the camera going, what happened? Well, we saw some very strange effects. The voltage on the voltmeter was going up and down from probably in the high 30s to around 80 volts and then back up and down and up and down and obviously things weren't working very well but since everything else was working and using this meter over here a good old analog meter that was working perfectly we could measure the current in this wire and since we knew the current and we knew the resistance here we could figure out the voltage which was supposed to be around 40 volts Anyway, I didn't want to delay the video and do some troubleshooting, so I figured I'd do that afterwards, and that's what we're doing today. So, one of the viewers had a very nice discussion with me in the comments about what the possible problem could be, and his thought was, was maybe the voltmeter isn't properly attached, and suggested maybe I experiment with that a bit. So I actually did, and I used some clips like these to make sure the voltmeter was properly attached and I repeated the experiment and unfortunately it didn't fix the situation. Now the thought that I had was that it might be the fact that the whole voltmeter's potential is now around 10 kilovolts above ground and from previous videos when you have potentials like that you start getting corona discharges meaning the electricity is escaping from the wires or the points in the circuit particularly through every sharp point and spewing out into the air and if that could happen in a very high impedance highly sensitive circuit in the voltmeter well that might cause the thing to produce erroneous readings. And the question was, how do we test that and maybe mitigate it? And what I thought was the best approach would be to cover the voltmeter in some sort of a metal frame, a metal structure, to elevate the potential all around it to, well, 10 kilovolts, the same voltage as these wires, and I used some aluminum mosquito mesh, the type of stuff you put on windows, to do that. So here's the voltmeter, and it's all covered in aluminum mesh. And let's see what happens. Now, I should point out that what I've done is I've made sure that one of the two terminals on the voltmeter is connected to the mesh itself to make sure that mesh is at full potential. And... Well, look how successful that is. We get a nice steady voltage, and it is almost exactly what we expected it to be. Now, the problem is, of course, we can't see what's going on in the voltmeter very well through that mesh. So I think the next thing to do is to try cutting a little hole in the mesh so that we can see the LCD display a bit better. And unless it turns out that's exactly where the problem is, well, that's probably the way to use a voltmeter like that. So let's test that now. Okay. Well, that seems to be working very well. And I think we have a solution. But it might be a lot nicer and easier if instead of using a mesh like that, we could use one of these anti-static bags. 
And these anti-static bags are made to hold electronic components, particularly things like CMOS that are sensitive to static electricity and can be damaged. And they typically are made either with a very fine coating of usually a very thin metallic film or by including something in the plastic that gives it just a little bit of an ability to conduct electricity. But when I say conduct, it doesn't conduct it very well at all. In fact, it's really an incredibly high resistor. And in fact, you can see if I measure it with a ohmmeter, we can't see any resistance at all. It just looks like infinity. But generally, that small amount is still enough to bleed away the few microamps of static zaps that might destroy an electronic component. So I thought we would try putting our voltmeter in those bags and see if that solves the problem. If this were a DC circuit, it would probably do that because it might take a little while for the high voltage to bleed its way through the entire high resistance plastic or high resistance coating and cover the whole bag with a full 10 or 15 kilovolt charge. But because it's AC, we run into a problem that's perhaps a little bit like skin depth. Namely, it takes a certain amount of time for the AC current to work its way along the surface of that plastic bag to get to the from the top to the bottom. But as soon as it does, or perhaps more unfortunately before it does, because it's AC, the polarity of the cycle changes and it never got to 15 kilovolts peak but it's already now being reduced. So I don't know how well these bags are gonna work, but I think we should try it. And we will try each one of them and see if the results are any better. So here's the first bag. And here's the second bag. And here's the third bag. Unfortunately, it looks like none of them are working. What that really means is the impedance, the resistance of that coating or that plastic layer that's supposed to bleed away the static electricity really is just too high to be effective for this situation and for these frequencies. So what that does mean is that if I or you ever need to suspend a voltmeter at a 15 kilovolt or 10 kilovolt potential. It certainly will work if you cover it in some sort of metal mesh to protect the insides from corona discharge. And again, what that mesh does is it raises the potential everywhere, including inside the mesh, to the full potential of the attached, in this case, power line. But by doing so, what it does is it means there's virtually no potential between the electronics of the voltmeter and the inside of that mesh. And what that does is very nicely make the voltmeter operate in a situation that it was really built for, and it works nicely. So that, I think, was a very interesting example of how tricky it can be at times to measure things properly, particularly when you're dealing with weird situations. And I hope you found that interesting and maybe useful. And see you next time.